I'm going to give you a brief intro to each of the panelists, just so you know, so they're not sitting up here, so you know who they are, and then I'll provide a, a longer introduction. Um, it, it's just really such an exciting thing to have these folks up here because the organizations they represent touch millions of people. So uh, uh, I'll just start with to my right. Uh, we have on the, my far right here, Himel Patesh, the creative director with Wall Street Journal and Dow Jones. Henry Bizet who is Managing Director at Kia Motors America for their Connected and Mobility Division. Gita Wilson over here, who's a VP of a, a really interesting title, VP of Customer Experience yes, at Humana. And Daniel Brusilovsky, who is uh, the Head of Digital Initiatives for the Golden State Warriors. You can applaud now. I apologize for the notes. I wanted, I really researched for this and got ready. I wanted to, to make sure we covered all the bases. You know what's really interesting? What's really interesting is that uh, chatbots are going to become the primary way that customers communicate with businesses. Messaging apps and chat, they're the single most popular forms of communication in the world. So you could imagine how that's going to be very important for every business. And just to make sure we're on the same proverbial page about what chatbots are, uh, and jump in if, if you disagree, but uh, the, the definition that I settled on to share with you and to talk amongst ourselves is that chatbots are virtual, personal, digital assistants that simulate a conversation with another human. That's simple. How many people in the audience, raise your hand please, are, are exploring creating your own or your company's chatbot? Great, great. So I hope today you'll get some insights into that uh, development path and what's being used. Chatbots, I understand, are the gateway drug to AI. Uh, they're the fastest route now to becoming an AI developer. Uh, and so today you're going to meet four chatbot pioneers who are addressing mass market audiences in a way that makes interaction with computing systems a more natural experience. They're gonna tell us how they use chatbots to provide greater support and different kinds of services to their customers. And we're talking about millions and millions of customers here. I'll give you a little bit of an introduction to Gita, our first speaker. Uh, Gita works for Humana. Humana, as you may know, is a Fortune 100 health insurance company uh, that loves technology, experimentation, and discovery, especially under Gita's guidance. As the uh, VP of Consumer Experience and Enterprise Transformation, Gita founded Humana's Fast Start Consumer Experience Lab that uses methods from Lean Startup, Agile Scrum, Design Thinking, and Lean Six Sigma to accelerate time to market across all lines of Humana's business. And her lab was honored with the 2016 Customer Experience Professionals Association Innovation Award. So Gita, with that uh, background, that you have a real unique insight into chatbots and AI, why don't you tell folks a little bit about the background of your chatbots work? Sure, so we're kind of using a, a very unique um, engagement that we have with uh, Kajito as our partners, and, and we're using it with interfacing with our customer service reps. So, um, as you know, like how many of how many of us um, have a bad experience with customer service reps? How many feel like they're listening to you? <laughs> and so, um, sometimes it's not that it's not that the agents aren't listening. It's perhaps they don't pick up on some cues, um, or they're busy trying to look at multiple screens and do gymnastics with screens and lots of tasks. And so we thought we brought Kajito when they asked them. Um, I asked them would they be willing to experiment with us um, and their product and they were like what are you thinking I said what if you gave us real-time VOC guidance um, when the cus customer service agent is taking a call and they they could see how well they emotionally connecting with the, uh, the consumer and what's so, VOC voice of, voice of the customer so yeah so ordinarily we do surveys and you do sort of a, uh, a feedback loop that says you know how was your experience today? Rate your experience between one to five. And uh, instead of doing that, we thought, you know, when they describe their technology, that it measures emotion, and, and it also looks at um, sort of markers that predate human language, 
um, I thought what better way to tap into um, that artificial intelligence and see if it can be applied to uh, an interaction between our member and our call center reps. And so they were up to the task. They said that you know they thought that would be a good application, and so we tried it. Um, and so it gives real time sort of guidance. So right now, like I could be talking too fast and you could not be listening and hearing me, but I might not be aware of that. So the chatbot um, interface that happens to the agent is that they get this cue, real time cue in dialogue tool that tells them you need to slow down perhaps, or, or perhaps there's too much pregnant pauses, or um, your tone is not matching the tone of the, um, uh, the member. And this, this sort of science came from, it was born out of, um, uh, Sandy Pentland's work from my MIT, so it was a spin-off out of a um, MIT media, uh, media Lab, and we, we found that the honest signals that they called it could have an application, so um, we're finding some good results. All right, great. What was the launch date? When did you first roll it out that you're now finding well, results? Well, we're now in the throes of rolling it out fully to um, our 2,000 pharmacy rep, um, agents, but what in the initial stages, because we're a lab, we said, um, let's try and test out this technology, let's do rapid experimentation. Um, and then we went from low fi, mid fi to high fi. Uh, fidelity, sorry, low fidelity, high, mid uh, Well, you all, but you know that. And um, we found that we rolled it out with, um, first with 200 um, call center um, associates. And then uh, after 400,000 calls that we analyzed, um, just under half a million we then were ready to pursue it to go um, live into rolling out with uh, one of our major lines of business. And what's the, the medium, the delivery medium? How, the, how do they engage with it? It's on their desktop. It's on their desktop. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And, you know, we, we worked through, like, you know, sometimes these bots could be quite annoying for them, right? You know, because they want to push it to the side. And so we actually observed behaviors where we didn't expect everyone to necessarily adopt, but we but we found that more people adopted than not. And so, you know, there's some learning that you takes place instead of having it always come on the screen, always be on the screen. We had it like come in as a notification on the screen. So there's, we tested and learned and we did some iter iteration on how it should interface and interact with the agents. That's really fun to hear about. All right, great. We'll, have, we'll come sure. back and talk a little bit more. Uh, our, our next speaker, Himesh Patel, comes from, as he, we told you, the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal just celebrated its 128th birthday uh, just on Saturday, July 8th. It's the largest newspaper in the U.S. by circulation, more than 2 million daily copies. And the, the journal does a, a heck of a lot of prototyping and, and experimentation. And I, I came across an interesting factoid that in 2004, the journal released an app that allowed users, in 2004, I just want to say that again, before, three, pre, that's before iPhone, they introduced an app that allowed users to access content from the journal's website via their mobile phone. So that, that's fairly groundbreaking. And, and that must be what led them 10 years later to hire Himesh. Uh, Himesh sure joined Dow that. Jones in 2014 as creative director, and he co-leads innovation focusing on new tech such as virtual and augmented reality, chat messaging, mobile alerts, and voice. And Himesh recently led the redesign of Wall Street Journal's digital platforms, including Wall Street, WSJ.com and the apps, uh, related apps for Android, iOS, and Apple Watch, among others. So Himesh, why don't you talk to folks about the Wall Street Journal bot and uh, its reason for being and how it works. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that. Um, and also, by the way, today we've just launched our new, fresh, uh, new look Wall Street Journal uh, app uh, on iOS, so you should check it out as well. Um, so just give you a little bit of context and some history in terms of uh, how we ended up um, creating our, our bots. Uh, so I work within the innovation lab in Dow Jones, and I'm sort of... Uh, Hold this close for you oh, now. sorry, sorry. And I co-run innovation uh, with Dow Jones, and part of our sort of remit uh, is really is to kind of look at the nexus of news and markets data our core proposition of the Wall Street Journal, what our offerings are, and to sort of look at the new emerging technologies and look ahead from six to 18 months in terms of which new platforms, new technologies that we should be experimenting with, uh, and how do we deliver our content uh, onto these different platforms and work out a user case. Um, and part of that process uh, over two years ago, or 18 months ago really now, uh, we started experimenting with sort of prototyping at a very lo-fi way of building basic sort of chat conversations and that's where we started off 
very much you know, creating HTML, very basic prototype within my team. We're very small, so we have a designer and a developer. And uh, we basically sketch and ideate constantly uh, throughout the day. And 18 months ago, we sort of started doing that process in terms of how do we tell a, a narrative uh, from a perspective of a news story and from a market's data. As Wall Street Journal, uh, what I get excited about is about market's data and how markets influence the news and news influence the market. So it's a very interesting proposition and how do you create an experience that is as exciting as reading the paper or at least consuming our content on a mobile or an iPad, for example. So through that process, uh, we strangely, as we do at Dow Jones and Innovation, we actually sent an email to David Marcus to say, hey, we have this awesome prototype uh, around Messenger and we built this HTML prototype and what do you think? We'd love to get some feedback. And that's something that we do a quite a lot across our uh, innovation projects, uh, similar with Google, with our Daydream VR project, AR and various things. So we tend to kind of get there and just send it out to these, you know, these awesome people and see uh, what their feedback is. And we learn from that and we hopefully that goes back into our learning. So part of that whole conversation with the Facebook Messenger was the fact that they were just about to launch this platform in April uh, last year. And they basically said, hey, we love it. And you've got four weeks to literally uh, build this thing out uh, and then launch. Uh, so that was a bit of an interesting uh, excitement on our end, trying to figure out what is a messenger chatbot and how do we build it. We had no technical know-how or understanding of it. So we partnered with a, a startup company in San Francisco called Notify.io, who really been instrumental in our success as well and helping us to really define what the platform is and how do we uh, kind of technically, how do we create a bot. So just talking about the actual bot itself, the experience, so as I mentioned, so the news and markets data is a kind of key factor. So the bot is really focused around markets data. It's a personalization, it's a live, real-time markets data app, I would like to call it. Um, and the, the whole as the experience is that individual can uh, use and go to our bot and look up any uh, US uh, company. So you can look up uh, company news, you can look up the, the company stock tickers, you look at a, a, a market overview, you can also follow and create your own watch list, so you can follow specific uh, companies, uh, which you can sort of set up, and at four o'clock when the markets uh, close in the US, you are then sent a news digest of all the companies that you're following. Um, so it's a very much a very personalized experience that we went for. Uh, and the kind of notion of having a real content, you know, having real content, live content within the chatbot was a very interesting experiment from our point of view. And beyond the, exper uh, the experiments now, I think in our latest sort of numbers show that we are attracting over 140,000 uh, daily active users. That means that they're actually physically using our bots every single day. That's roughly about 10% of our audience on our WSJ.com which is a really big and very exciting uh, sort of position to be in. Um, and part of innovation, as I said earlier, we love to experiment and build new audiences. So we don't really know in some of these experiments if it will work or not. But over the months of you know, adapting and continually changing and learning from the user feedback, that's where we are right now. So that's roughly what the bot is. So we encourage everybody to check out that, that bot and start. Uh, it's, it still needs work, but I would love to have feedback as well. Just, just, it's a still work in progress. Thanks, Amesh. Uh, I'm really excited about uh, this man's role and what he brings to the table because in, in my mind, um, and bear with me, I'm a baby boomer, but I think all chatbots owe uh, a debt to my mother, the car, and Jerry Van Dyke. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, <laughs> Google it, my mother, the car. South Korea's second largest automobile manufacturer is Kia, with sales of over 3.3 million vehicles in 2015. Now, in 1992, Kia Motors America was incorporated in the U.S., and that's where uh, Henry is based. And Kia Cars uh, have won the International Car of the Year Award every year since 2013, so they're doing something right. Now, the company has identified design as its core future growth engine. And I don't know if you know this, but every Kia has what's called a tiger nose. The tiger nose, because the chief design officer said a car needs a face. So it's no surprise that this company has embraced chatbots, faceless or not, and uh, apparently hamsters. Henry Bizet, can you please tell folks about Kia's work with chatbots and AI? Oh, absolutely. So, you know, in terms of uh, the Kia of yesterday and Kia of today, 
uh, the company's come a long way. Uh, we've won the JD Power and Associates uh, quality, initial quality, two years in a row. Uh, so it really is uh, incredible what's happening uh, in our industry and especially with Kia. So why did we do this? Uh, maybe we do a little bit um, interactive. So uh, we can ask a question and please raise your hand. So how many of you have had the honor of had, you know, a dealership experience, you know? How many of you actually went to a dealership? Or a, a lot of you, okay. So how many of you felt, you know, any sort of um, dissatisfaction with that experience? A lot of you. So it does mirror, you know, the research here, which says 87% of people dislike something about an experience at a dealership. And so, um, not to get into that too much, but why did we do this? Really, it's consumer centricity. You know, we felt that this technology or this approach would give our consumers a more personal approach, uh, a better approach, more trusting approach uh, of our product. So that's the kind of the, f the first thing that we thought of is to start thinking more about the consumer and less about the product, being consumer centric and less product centric. So that's very important. Uh, the second thing is that we noticed that people are really researching cars on mobile. I mean, it's really incredible that over half the people are looking at cars, researching cars, and going to the parking lot where the cars are with the mobile phone, you know, doing the research and so forth. So mobile is a very powerful platform uh, when it comes to the car buying experience. So we, had to, we have to embrace that, and we felt this was a good way of embracing it, making it that fluid experience and, and seamless experience between the consumer and our products. The third reason why we did this is because we launched uh, our dedicated hybrid product, uh, the Kia Nero. I don't know if you guys heard of that product or not. Uh, essentially, the, this is a dedicated hybrid, meaning it's not like a vehicle that just you know, added a battery and became a hybrid. It actually, like the Prius family is a dedicated hybrid, and the Kia Nero is the competitor to that. So. We felt we need, from a technology perspective, uh, bring in this type of approach to kind of bring it all together, not just from a product side, but from a consumer facing and digital side. So those are the three main reasons why we did what we did. Uh, the chatbot really is about a feature and function. Uh, it's not just texting back and forth. It's an immersive experience in terms of, it's capable of having GIFs and 360 degree views. So, yeah, so it's not just, texting and saying back and forth, it's much more than that. And that was important uh, in terms of having that type of experience in place. Uh, we've had, I know we can't compete with 150,000 a day, but we've had over a million uh, sessions you know, since we launched this thing in October 2016. So it's been, it's been uh, quite, quite the experience and exceeded our expectations. What's the delivery medium for the Neurobot? So it's uh, Messenger. Yeah, okay. so Messenger is what we use for that, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks for that. No problem. <coughs> California's pride and joy, the Golden State Warriors, have reached nine NBA finals, winning five NBA championships, uh, most recently in 2017, this year. Uh, Golden State's five NBA championships are tied for fourth most in NBA history with the San Antonio Spurs and behind only uh, Boston Celtics, LA Lakers, and the Bulls out of Chicago. As of 2017, the Warriors are the third most valuable NBA franchise with an estimated value of $2.6 billion. Now, given the fact that the Warriors really are the home team for Silicon Valley, it makes sense that uh, the Warriors have someone like Daniel Brusilovsky on board as their digital initiatives lead. He f he's focused on digital and tech innovation and emerging technologies. And uh, interestingly, you could talk to him about this at the party later, he's the co-founder of Emoji, the largest sticker library in the world, which was required by Giphy earlier this year. And before he joined the Golden State Warriors, Daniel headed up BizDev at a payment startup, and he spent some time at some uh, venture capital firms and TechCrunch, uh, and has been uh, involved in tech since he was a teenager. Why don't you tell us about the Warriors and your chatbot, Daniel? Thanks for having me, everyone. No, that's loud. Um, so for us, uh, it really started with uh, our whole philosophy is we need to be wherever our fans are. Um, and so when we looked at kind of where 
where our fans are and what platforms are using, it's hard to ignore uh, Messenger, which has over a billion uh, monthly active users. And so uh, we talked to Facebook, and, and they have all this data, and, and they said, you know what, uh, I think it would make sense if, if you guys built uh, a, messen a bot on Messenger for Warriors fans. And we kind of looked at what other teams or uh, the ESPNs and all that of the world have built, and we weren't really impressed with a lot of it. I think a lot of it was just taking existing content um, and just adding another destination for it. Uh, and so we wanted to do something really special. And so we wanted to create the ultimate playoff assistant. So uh, what we realized is that for, for a lot of Warriors fans, it was probably going to be the first time they've ever interacted with a, a bot, um, especially maybe on Messenger. So we wanted to create both a guided experience, but also an experience that you can type in any question and get immediate answers to. And so the, the goal of the, the playoff assistant was to bring highlights, stats, uh, real-time scores, um, replays, you could type in uh, any player and get uh, their top plays from the playoffs. I mean, basically, any question you may have uh, from a content perspective, but then also questions specifically around the arena. What time do doors open? How much is parking? Where are the ATMs? Where's, uh, I want to buy a beer. How much is that? All these different questions um, that the answers are there, whether it's on warriors.com or in our app, but if you just want a, an answer really quickly, uh, being able to just free type into Messenger and get a response really quickly was something that we wanted to achieve. And so uh, we ended up launching this um, at Facebook F8. Um, so we were uh, lucky enough to be included in the keynote uh, with David Marcus uh, to launch one of their new features, which were parametric codes, where you could scan this code. Uh, it's kind of Facebook's version or Messenger's version of a QR code and start the bot experience with the Warriors. And so uh, we were one of their launch partners for that. And so we were lucky enough to be featured uh, at F8, which was the day before game one of the playoffs. Um, so the timing worked out great in early April. And so we had this running uh, the entire playoffs. And now we're in the process of figuring out what do we want to do for an entire season now that we have all this data for just the playoffs and, and create an even better bot experience for uh, Dub Nation all around the world and, and how they use Messenger. Right on. Thank you. Thanks. I, I thought it would be interesting for you guys to hear a little bit about the uh, technology framework and the SDKs and the kind of the skills and the team that you involved in building and rolling out and maintaining and supporting your chatbot. So we'll go in reverse order and just take a couple of minutes to talk about the technical aspects of, of, of building your tool. Daniel? Sure. So we, uh, we partnered with ChatFuel, uh, which is a San Francisco-based company, to, um, to power the bot. And then we worked with uh, another company called StanFi, um, who helped us do a lot of the integration. So um, we're lucky that being part of the MBA, the MBA helps a ton in terms of stats and real-time info and um, a lot of that kind of data. And so there's, a, there's the MBA stats feed, which uh, basically when you typed in Curry stats or Durant stats would give you every single uh, stat line um, in the bot. And so integrating that feed as well as our, uh, a system we use called WSC, um, which is our uh, video replay and highlight system. So being able to pull in highlights and all that stuff. So it was a combination of uh, ChatFuel, which is kind of the underlying platform, um, and then working with a company called StanFi to actually do a lot of the integrations and heavy lifting to integrate all these uh, data sources and bring it all into Messenger. Do you have a dedicated person on the team, who on the staff, who um, supports and continues helping out with resources for the chatbot? Yeah, so during the playoffs, we have, uh, during the playoffs, it's kind of all hands on deck. So we have a digital team of nine people that oversee web, social, email, and mobile. And so um, during the playoffs, pretty much every single person had a role, whether it's uh, covering uh, on social or uh, warriors.com, written content, all of that kind of stuff. And so uh, we had one person who was also dedicated to making sure that the bot was updating properly, uh, properly that um, at the end of every quarter, you would get the, the score alert uh, plus a video highlight. So I'm just making sure everything was working. We were lucky that a lot of this was built uh, to work um, automatically, that we didn't necessarily have to have a person sitting there and making sure. Uh, but of course, it's the playoffs, so it's, it's kind of the, the biggest time of the year. So we want to make sure that uh, we had someone uh, to make sure all the score graphics went out and all the highlights and all the replays and all that kind of stuff. Thank you. Henry, how about uh, at your company? How does Kia 
um, put it together the resources to support the chatbot? What are you using for your framework? So we, we definitely rely on our digital agency. So every automaker, they have a, an agency on record which handles a lot of the digital work for them, you know, websites, apps, and so forth. So Ansible is our agency. And so what we've done with Ansible is that we utilized uh, NLP and uh, machine learning and, and obviously the manual training to get that going. But uh, for the chat platform, we use reply.ai. And for the intent, we use api.ai. And then a lot of the interactive development was done through what you see, what you get, and, and JSON uh, type uh, development. So those are kind of the technical things that were used in development of the bot. Yeah. And then on an ongoing basis, the team, you've got, you're relying on the agency and the teams to keep it going? Certainly. I mean, even though you have, you know, a artificial intelligence and machine learning capability, you still need that analytical, uh, you know, source that always keeps going and see what's going on and making sure everything's getting updated. So there's a team, maintenance team, that kind of supports that process and keeps it going, make sure it's, it's really growing in a, in a good pace. Uh, it's correct. Everything is being, you know, f fine tuned. Yeah, okay. yeah. Are those pr programmers? The uh, they're developers and an uh, and analytics uh, analytics people. Yeah, yeah. Himesh, you mentioned the uh, tool that you used, and I didn't quite catch it for the bot that the uh, Wall Street Journal built. Why don't you talk a little bit more about the technology? Um, so yeah, so we use uh, Notify.io as uh, and their plat and their platform uh, and our sort of bot is based on that, uh, and so they're on a on a full time. Kind of, we have a yearly contract with them, so they're full time on our bot. So the way we look at it is that every month we would want to make some changes to the bot or so we'll add new features uh, and look at analytical data. Uh, so we have a data analyst uh, within our team who looks at our data every uh, week, and we have a by um, by fortnightly we have a report in terms of what's working, what's not working within the bots uh, and the type of content that uh, users are consuming. Um, in terms of the sort of the actual physical coming up with the concepts and the ideas and the next feature sets, um, we really work closely with our editorial team, our newsroom uh, of the Wall Street Journal. Um, and within my team, it's myself uh, and a UI UX designer, Takuma, who I work with very closely. And we tend to do a lot of sketching, and then we would liaise with Notify in terms of our direction. And it's a key thing for us is the kind of user case in terms of what are we trying to solve and what are we trying to perceive and how do we tell a story through a bot. So uh, Notify um, are awesomely brilliant at that, and, and we have an awesome relationship where uh, we can ideate at that level as well. And they really understand our sort of mission in terms of what we are trying to achieve and, and the kind of and, and our users and who we're trying to target for. So that really helps from their point of view. Thank you. Humana touches so many people, do you, uh, millions and millions. Do you have a large team? And, 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 tell, and did, did Humana and your team develop your chatbot internally? No, we used, okay, um, yeah, we used Cogito as our partners. And um, so my team is you know, 25 people. And, um, and for us, it was more about integration into our existing systems. And um, you mean uh, IT or lines of business? Both. Okay. So um, we outsource a lot of our calls, for example, and so um, with our vendor partners, um, we needed to make sure that this system can talk to that system. And so um, it was good that uh, Kajito is a Salesforce um, partner, and so we had just moved our, uh, moving our CRM system into with Salesforce, and so we were able to uh, utilize them. We first, when we did the pilot, we just started with an on-prem solution, and then we're rolling out with a, uh, a software cloud-based solution with them. And so it's just pr basically a lot of plug and play um, that we had to do on our end uh, to open up the integration um, and the firewall and get permission from our legal and compliance folks around opening up and having the transference of data between ourselves. Yeah, that's a whole other interesting topic about uh, the, the legal and building data from a set of customer interactions and what's okay and not. Does your entire 25-person team work on chatbots in some way, or is it a, you have a spe separate group? Yeah, this is um, just one of, it's one of our projects, and so we try to, um, at any given point, handle, you know, we do a lot of tests and learns, and we also have um, initiatives that we bring to scale to the company. And so we also not just test and learn, but we build and develop and scale. 
And so um, a, lot of our, a lot of our work is done predicated on partnerships as well, internally and externally. So we, we launched the first um, visual IVR tool in healthcare, which is an on-screen touch, uh, menu, touch screen menu. Instead of interacting with your IVR, you interact with a, your smartphone and use your visual screen to like, self-select into an option to either complete a task or to get through to a representative. All right, help me, uh, in, uh, visual ITI? Visual IVR, uh, IVR. yeah. Yeah. Which is? Um, it's, it's really a, a visual um, version of an IVR, but it's actually those who are in the digital space. Um, it's our first omni-channel tool where we actually do some IVR and some um, uh, digital. It's sort of like a crossover tool that you can allows, allow someone to, who's normally used to calling, which is our member base, uh, for us to intercept them and perhaps give them an alternative instead of getting through to a call rep, would they want to, what tasks are they completing? And so um, it, it actually complements the technology with Kajito really well because once they do go get through to a rep and they don't get transferred, um, it circumvents that transfer to, a, to get to uh, the rep of their choice in terms of the one who can answer their question. That frustration level is mitigated by them, one, not having to repeat themselves, but also feeling that that person on the other end is hearing them. And, and so, so it's really good. Um, most of our initiatives we work on are called service experience of, our f of the future. And so we, we, we toy around with a few solutions, and that's two of them. So you're saying your bot helps people get what they're looking for when they're looking for it. Other than that, well, can you name three great character, three characteristics of a great bot? Um, I think you answer some of them, but I think uh, a good artificial intelligence or bot, um, it automates uh, a task that was previously done by a human, right? And once it automates that task, it also has um, the ability to get speed to insight, and so it generates from quickly speed to insight to machine learning, and so it it starts to learn and self-heal. For us, in this application, you know, imagine the capture of the VOC feedback uh, process. You'd capture it, you'd then analyze those results, and then once you analyze those results, you'd disseminate them to the various areas, and then they'd come up with some improvement plan to then try and like uh, address that uh, issue. And so you look at you look at how this um, technology has allowed us to quickly circumvent that whole process from which we, by which we get um, and develop insight to actually get into the action and course correct in, in the moment. And so that's the power of it, is we've bypassed all of that unnecessary productivity um, or lack of productivity and channeled it to the actual interaction with members so that we can develop an inter emotional connection with them. It actually gives us every mem every agent gets for every interaction an emotion score. And, and so there's, some, there's other part of this technology that we use for uh, coaching as well. So it actually makes you want to improve yourself because you look at that and you think, okay, maybe I got a six and maybe I wanna go for you know an eight and a nine. So it also avoids some of those awkward conversations you might have with a, uh, a frontline leader or a team leader and manager. So a great chatbot is bi-directional in, in, in exchanging and receiving information and, and is a good therapist. Kind of <laughs> ways in there. Henry, Henry, keeping in mind that customer service is a combination of machine-driven and human interactions, as Gita just pointed out, the human in the background is often there to handle more complex queries. Um, I imagine that your chatbot does that, but what else would you like your chat to be your chatbot to be able to do? Well, one of the things that I feel um, we need to really expand the capabilities of this medium is to build a security framework around it. Meaning, I'd like to see the transactions uh, being done. Uh, I'd like to use it for my connected uh, services: uh, remote start, remote lock, remote unlock. I mean, we can do those, but the thing is, just it doesn't feel that we have enough cybersecurity framework around it. And I think this is something that we need to really, you know, work on and see because I think this is a great opportunity. Yeah. 
I, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because I forgot to mention, and something you might want to talk to uh, about with Henry later is that Henry sits on the board of a of an organization that is trying to raise awareness about cybersecurity for the entire global automotive industry. So he's really connecting those dots there between the capturing of sensitive data and then being secure about not letting it go beyond that. So so good for you, man. That's glad that you're doing that. Himesh, let's talk about how, you know, here we are telling people, go check out the Wall Street Journal bot. So in the big world outside, how do you solve bot discoverability problems? Um, you know, how do you get people to use your chatbot? Uh, by doing conferences like this, obviously, uh, <laughs> and having T-shirts, uh, which we missed out. Um, I think seriously. I think in terms of the Facebook sort of platform, uh, I mean, we've also have a, um, a Google Action uh, app on the Google Home, uh, and also multimodal on the Google Assistant site. So you can now should experience the Water Journal on your phones, either iOS or Android as well. And 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 all of these different platforms, in a sense, have their own issues in terms of discoverability. And it's always been our conversation with. Uh, at least Facebook's product team for many, many months in terms of how do we leverage uh, or how do we become the recommended bot every day. And uh, clearly, that's a big challenge. And I think uh, I think there are clearly, what, 30 or 1,000 bots uh, on Facebook Messenger. So it's always going to be a challenge, and it's something that we appreciate that. It's a very difficult thing to solve. But I think a couple of things that's ha happening, or at least Facebook are engaging with, and certainly this year's fa uh, F8, we launched a chat extension. Uh, I don't know if anyone's sort of started using the chat extension, but it's a basically a micro version of your chatbot, if that makes sense. So if I am chatting to you, uh, a friend in a, in a very personal sense, um, I can very easily by tapping T, tapping on the plus on the messenger, and any bot that you have been interacting with will display as a little uh, menu, and you can tap on the Wall Street Journal, and automatically you will see a bunch of latest news headlines, markets data you can search for, and by one single tap, you're then sharing that content uh, into your personal chat thread. And I think that to me is really interesting and appealing because Facebook and obviously Messenger is a social network in a way that it is a social interaction. And I think the way to organically distribute your content within that space is very, very important. And I think it's incredibly powerful as well. Um, and certainly in terms of creating news and content like we do, it is imperative that that's a good channel for us to be discovered. Uh, and if you do share with someone, it, it also gives you the prompt to be able to go back to the chatbot as well. So there's a sort of, a, a sort of circular uh, interaction there. Um, and saying that, I think internally, we need to do a lot more work and we need to get better at promoting our own uh, chatbots across our different platforms. Uh, original chapel was always seen as an experiment, trying to figure out user cases as a new audience builder. But now we're in a position or a situation where we think we've got a very good audience and a very loyal audience um, and the traction that we're having. So we are actively having conversations across the board in terms of how do we integrate and promote the experience on our website, mobile, and rest, things like that. So. All right, great. That's fast. That's really interesting. It, it makes, you've heard, okay, Daniel, you've heard all their really cool aspects and features what makes the Wall Street Journal bot a little bit interesting, pretty successful, getting better all the time. Getting better. Uh, okay, so we know what makes Steph Curry interesting and successful. What makes the Warriors chatbot, the ultimate playoff assistant, interesting and successful? Or looking back at, at its rollout during the playoffs. Yeah, I think for us, it was it was a chance to try something new and, and bring unique content to, to fans. Um, for example, if you have the Warriors app, at the end of every quarter, you can get a push notification that tells you the score. But with the bot, we also included a video highlight with the, one of the top plays from that quarter as well. So something that you can't necessarily get through Facebook or Twitter or, uh, or even our app through kind of that end of quarter notification, we tried to do something completely different with it, which is still give you the actual data and, and the score and the stats, but also give you that top play. Um, so I think it's taking a lot of the, the small things that we've learned that, that work from our other properties and our other channels, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, our app, Instagram, Snapchat, um, and then figuring out how do we best apply it to, to a completely new platform like Messenger. Um, but we, we don't have it figured out at all yet. Um, it's still very early for us, and we're still looking at... Um, 
a lot of data just from the playoffs. Uh, we work with a great company called Dashbot.io, um, which ingests all of the uh, all of the the data from the the chatbot, and we can go and look back at transcripts and look at top users and see. Um, you know, one of the one of the really interesting things for us is to see what are the top uh, questions that that fans are asking, and to see do we have a response for them. Because um, that's one of the, the big things for us is we want to make sure that if you're asking something in particular that we have a response for that. Um, and so one of the things that we, that we didn't have a response for but we quickly realized was during the finals we had watch parties at Oracle Arena where even though we were playing in Cleveland you could come and watch the game on the scoreboard at Oracle Arena. And we had people asking us what time do doors open for the watch party or how do I get tickets for the watch party or uh, certain watch party questions that we just didn't have programmed. Um, so to be able to very quickly see that there's a lot of questions that are coming in and to be able to address them really quickly, um, I think it's Messenger or chatbots in general are one of the only platforms that you can have that that really quick um, that really quick uh, interaction in between seeing what's happening and then having a response hopefully uh, in a matter of minutes. What, what would a chatbot say if I said, why is LeBron such a big baby? Uh, it would respond with a funny gif. Gita, with that, with that in mind, uh, is there any humor built into the Humana chatbot? And if not, what makes it engaging? What, why do your, your audiences want to engage with the chatbot? What makes it work? So because it's not member-facing, it's really um, internal for the agent to um, get those cues. It has to be accurate, right? So it would be off, if it was off and... It was saying that you're speaking really quickly and, and you're, you're, what you're doing is matching the uh, member's um, speed right, and tone. It, it actually interprets all of that really well. In fact, this, um, uh, the technology that's been developed with MIT, it's under IP, and so it's not something that we could replicate, but it also needed to be tested. Uh, and so for us, the accuracy by which it delivers the, the sort of um, the cues in the dialogue tool were important. That emotion score was important, and we're a regulated industry, meaning that uh, our quality scores, and we have to be of a certain standard. And what we found that there was a relationship between the emotion scores that those who um, had six and above in their interaction with a member are, you, are likely to also have a top box um, uh, category core rating in our quality scores with our regulating body in caps. Now that's just so that you have some understanding of that impact, that's millions of dollars, right? So what makes us happy is not wasting money, right, in a business line of business, but uh, make sure we can invest in future initiatives like this. And then the last thing I'll say is any technology, um, to reinforce the point, it's good to have a technology, but it's also good to have human um, intervention and so it was important that our agents felt comfortable utilizing that this t uh, tool and that we also took their feedback on how we implemented and how we utilize that so we're having fun we're having um, you know initial degrees of success but we're not there yet too right and so uh, we're liking this space and we're liking the opportunities that it can give us as well Th thanks Gita uh, both of you like metaphorically and literally uh, have organizations that let you look down the road. So with that in mind, why don't you each take this on, Himesh, uh, you first. What is it that you're excited about for the future of your chatbot's development? And after Himesh, Henry will answer. Um, so I think, um, I mean, to be honest, we have a nine months uh, uh, roadmap uh, penciled out uh, to at least two the next year. And one of the big things that I think is missing from our experience more than anything else is uh, native content. And it's a really big question mark in terms of what is the native content? What content can we be creating just for our bot uh, and the different type of users that we have? We have a very 40% uh, or so of our users are under 35, uh, which is a completely different demographic to our print products or general WSJ products. Um, and at the same time, we have an audience, huge audience in India and Philippines and in Asia where we are not necessarily strong. So that's a big question for us in terms of what kind of native content we can create or serve to these individuals. And something right now we're actually building uh, is a new CMS in the background for our reporters, uh, which is based on Messenger itself, 
uh, for them to be in the field to be able to chat and uh, essentially create live events. So if there's a live event going on or a big breaking story, uh, they can be in the field uh, tweeting or in, in the theory tweeting, but they will be um, communicating through the messenger uh, bot of the Wall Street Journal. Uh, so that's what I'm super excited by, and I think uh, we should launch that in uh, hopefully in six weeks' time. Um, and so the second of the kind of the kind of big feature that we're also building out um, is a submission. So we want users to submit uh, content to us as well. Uh, we have a very good call to action where we want users to, if they are in a certain spot or a location, uh, for us, for them to be able to send us content, either that's pictures or words. Um, and again, we are building out a system in the background so that we can deal with that and, and at the same time respond back to and interact with our uh, users. And finally, just finally, uh, we are also super excited by personalization, the whole experience about personalization in news. And uh, the key factor of Washington Journal, which I love, uh, any media that I worked in, is the fact that I love the writers. And I think that's what makes the brand itself. So I think to be able to follow your authors, your favorite author uh, within the messenger body is a super, super exciting and a greater way of connecting in a very kind of poignant way to their users and to be able to get alerts and notifications when uh, your favorite author has just published something in the Washington Journal on the paper or digital, it's a great way of uh, uh, exposing that. So that's, that's roughly our roadmap for the next nine months. Brilliant. Henry? Okay, so we have some near-term goals and we have also some long-range goals. And near-term is to take what we did with Nero and apply it across the board, all our vehicles, uh, 13 different uh, platforms. So. Uh, essentially scaling up and making sure every vehicle we offer has that capability to support that type of uh, consumer interaction. So that's our near-term strategy. Long-term strategy is really taking a look at our consumer affairs. So we have hundreds of people who just really, from a human perspective, their job is to answer calls and support consumers, uh, especially with our 10-year warranty and 100,000-mile warranty. So there's a lot of interaction that happens on the human side. We're looking, and technology is is going exponentially in cars, are becoming more complex. We're talking about autonomous vehicles, we're talking about connectivity. So you need that level of smart interaction that needs to take place, and so we're seeing that as an opportunity to, for the chatbot uh, strategy to supplement the human strategy to, to give a, a good consumer experience. This sounds like a lot of fun. You've got yep. a great year ahead of you. Yep. Everybody, please join me in thanking Himesh Patel, Henry Brzee, Gita Wilson, and Daniel Brusilovsky talking to you today about chatbots. So thanks for coming, and I hope you have a good show. And feel free to talk to us about anything you want to on your way out. Take care.